Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, I'm Katie Welch, and I'm going to be speaking to you today about Kahoot, balancing rigor and engagement through gamification. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I have been training teachers for the past 15 years, uh, teachers who are going to work with English learners in a variety of contexts. Some of the teachers I've trained work in K-12 education. Others go on to work with English learners in higher ed or adult and community contexts. And I love working with teachers because I'm a teacher myself. Um, I have taught in all of those contexts and continue to uh, teach. And any time that I'm in the classroom, I love to use educational technology. That is, I love integrating technology into my instruction. And so I'm excited to be speaking with you today about Kahoot, which is um, a website, an app that is available uh, to educators like ourselves um, that can enhance our instruction. Um, I do have a PhD in linguistics, and so some of my teaching is centered around linguistics, but mostly in applied linguistics um, as it relates to, to ESL. Uh, one other thing is that I'm located in Texas in the U.S., and I'm currently serving as past president of the Tex ESOL chapter. So if you're plugged into uh, TESOL International, um, our a chapter is uh, alive and well down here in Texas. And again, it's wonderful to get to connect with ESL educators both here and around the world. So today our objectives are going to be that we're going to, uh, both by the end of the session, be able to define gamification and formative assessment. Those are some of our vocab words for today, and they may or may not be um, uh, previously known to you, but by the end of the day, um, we'll be up on what each of those terms mean. Um, we're going to list some of the features of Kahoot, this educational technology platform that we're going to be discussing. We're going to be able to identify how Kahoot increases engagement through gamification. We're going to be able to apply knowledge of formative assessment to Kahoot, and we're going to make connections between Kahoot and the ESL classroom. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to work our way through each of those objectives. First, I want to talk about gamification. Uh, gamification is um, the use of game design elements in non-game context. So um, it's very likely that in your life that you may be involved in some type of gaming. Um, it may be Minecraft. It may be Farmville. It may be that you've got some uh, Candy Crush downloaded on your Facebook. Um, but many, many people around the world are gamers. Uh, but even if you're not a gamer, uh, you can still take the principles of gamification and apply them into your classroom. And so that's exactly what gamification is. It's taking those different design elements that you see in a video game and applying them into new contexts. And specifically, we're interested in educational contexts. Um, we know that gaming is popular. Uh, one statistic that I have here is that 28 million people harvest their crops on Farmville each day. Farmville is a, a gaming app. And uh, obviously, 28 million people is an incredible amount of people that are involved in the gaming community. Uh, you know that you're in a gaming type environment when you see specific elements. Um, sometimes you'll see things like experience points, leveling up, you'll see badges and leaderboards. These are all different elements of being in a game. Who's winning? Can I earn a badge for um, accomplishing a task? Can I level up um, so that I've, I have completed level one and now I'm on level two or level three, et cetera? Um, uh, Easter eggs is one of the gaming elements that I listed here. Uh, in an online course that I teach, I hide, quote unquote, Easter eggs in the course itself, and these come in the format of Scrabble letters. Um, Scrabble is a game that you play with the alphabet, and so I will hide different letters of the alphabet in different portions of our online course for students to discover. And it's like an Easter egg hunt where you're hunting for the Easter egg and you don't know where you're going to find it. And it increases engagement because students are trying to find 
well, where is that Scrabble letter hidden somewhere in our course? And so it keeps them watching the videos and downloading the PowerPoints, et cetera. Um, all of these are different types of gaming elements. Now in education, we have many popular apps that utilize this, this system of gamification. We see this extensively in K-12 education. Um, one kind of current app that's very popular in K-12 is called Class Dojo. And this is where um, everyone in, a, let's say, an elementary class of, let's say, third graders gets to be a different monster. They get to choose their own avatar and they get to choose which monster they're going to be. And then uh, if they perform the expected behaviors of the class, whether that is turning in homework or um, being focused during their work or lining up correctly, teachers are able to issue points to um, the different monsters in their class. Um, and the students compete against each other to be able to level up, to um, earn different badges. And so it's a gamified educational app. Um, we also, there's many, many apps like this that use these gamification principles. Class Dojo is one example. There's another called GimKit. Um, there's another called ClassCraft. So this has become a, kind of a, a big market of um, apps that are available that utilize these principles. Um, another one is Kahoot, which is the one that we're talking about today, which takes these gamification ideas and, um, and applies them into a platform that we're going to be able to look at. Kahoot's very popular in K-12, but I have used Kahoot with uh, elementary school students all the way up to um, adults, young adults and um, older adults, and the results are always the same because even though uh, you think of gamification as being something for young people, that young people like to do video games, um, in reality, the average gamer is 32 years old, so not so young. And uh, four in five adult learners believe that they would be more productive with a game-like environment. Um, so even though some of these ideas are coming out of uh, K-12 education, um, we see them being um, adopted and used and enjoyed by adult learners. So specifically today, I want to talk to you about Kahoot, um, which is able to take these principles of gamification that creates engaged learners, learners who want to be in your class, you're excited uh, to be a part of the learning experience, but at the same time, without sacrificing academic rigor. That is, you're not, it's not a trade-off between having fun in the classroom versus having quality learning. And that's the real advantage to Kahoot. Uh, and so we wanna to touch on those two aspects today. First, I wanna talk about what is Kahoot. Uh, Kahoot is a free, and that's really important to us teachers, right? We love things that are free, a free online tool that is available. Um, you do not have to have an app downloaded on your phone to use Kahoot. You can just go to a website in order to use it. Um, if you want to set up your own account for Kahoot, then you would just go to kahoot.com and then you can uh, go over to sign up for free down here and you're able to create your own account. Very simple. Uh, when you play Kahoot, this is what the screen looks like. So think of Kahoot like a game and uh, this is the game screen um, that uh, a learner would be looking at. And so we're going to, in the next few slides, look at what does it look like from the student perspective. So we'll look at the end of this presentation about what does it look like from the teacher perspective on the back end. But these next few slides are really focused on uh, what does it look like from the student view. And so let's say a student is going to play a Kahoot. They have the option to type in the URL kahoot.it into their phone or they could download the Kahoot app, but they don't have to have the app. They could just navigate to the website. There's going to be a game pen. In this case, we have a longer pen with seven numbers here that the student will type in um, uh, to the website to get them logged into your game. And then they're going to um, 
enter in their name. So that way we have the class um, roster ready to go to play the game. And so in this Kahoot example, we have four players, one's named English student, one's named awesome EL, one's named English learner, and one's named adult learner. On the, on the phone side, so let's say a student is playing on their device. This is what it looks like um, to the student themselves as they play. They would go to kahoot.it, they would enter the game pin, that uh, seven digit number we just saw, and every Kahoot game has a unique pin associated with it. They would click enter. Then after they click enter, we go to this middle um, example here where they would type in their name. So this person types in English learner, they click OK Go, and then they begin to play the game. Now Kahoot is very similar to a multiple choice of question uh, where typically you would have A, B, C, or D as the response. Uh, in this case, in Kahoot, instead of having A, B, C, D, the student is choosing the red triangle, the blue diamond, the yellow circle, or the green square. So those are their options. This is, how, and that's how they respond. So depending on what question is being asked, they're going to click the corresponding color and shape. Uh, so I want to show you a quick video so you can see what it looks like as a, um, a student is logging into Kahoot. Um, now, when you're working with young children, sometimes you worry about the fact that they might, uh, when they're entering their name, they might put something silly or inappropriate. Um, in fact, when you log into Kahoot, it asks you not for your name, but for your nickname. And so sometimes this can inspire a type of creativity that we're not really looking for. Um, and so Kahoot is gonna try to filter out those types of names. But if something comes in that's inappropriate, the teacher can just click on the name um, to uh, delete that out of the roster. And it uh, forces the student to go back and type in a different name. Um, also, just if a student makes a mistake, um, if they accidentally put, maybe they misspell their name or maybe they, Sometimes they get confused and they'll put the game pin number in instead of their name because they're confused about which part in the process they are. Uh, you can just click on um, that name and it will disappear. So I'm going to play a video so you can see what that would look like. And so you see inappropriate there right in the middle of the screen and I just click it and it's gone and now that person will have to re-log in. Then you click start and then here the questions are beginning uh, for the students. And so this is what they would see. When students don't feel very comfortable, they can't learn blank. And then you see there's four options here. You see we've got the red triangle, effective, the blue diamond, effectively, the yellow um, circle, very effective, or the green, good, uh, that square. Um, and so they're gonna choose which one of this is it. And uh, We'll finish out this video, and then on the next slide, we can kind of see what it looks like. So the, on their phone, they're seeing those four options, and up on the screen, they're seeing the question, and so they just click on whatever um, shape and color corresponds to their answer. Now, after um, everyone has selected, so let's say the entire class, and I only have four students in my, my uh, example class here, but uh, after everyone has chosen their answer, then you're going to see the results screen like this. And so in this case, I had three um, students who um, identified the correct answer and one who did not. And so this would be visible to the class. And then at this point, you can discuss why the correct answer was the correct answer, or um, if there's any confusion, you could go back and, and discuss that as well. Now on the student side, and this is where the gamification aspect comes in. On the student side, when they uh, get the answer correct, so uh, they're going to see a green screen with a check mark, and then they're going to see, uh, it depends on how they're playing in the game currently as to what else they see. But in this example, this person sees answer streak two, meaning that they've gotten two answers correct. 
they see that they now have earned 1,078 points and that it says you're on the podium. Uh, now, there's several gamification principles at play here. One is this concept of an answer streak. This idea that um, we as human beings are psychologically wired that we enjoy uh, achieving and succeeding. And so even if we're not uh, the very top of the podium, we're not the, the, the current number one person on the Kahoot, uh, Kahoot is still going to reward us by telling us, yes, you're getting them right. You're getting more right. You've gotten three right in a row. You've gotten four right in a row. So it's going to identify those answer streaks. Uh, anytime you get the answer correct, you're going to get a number of points. Um, now, this person received 1,078 points. And you might be thinking, what a very random number, uh, right? It seems like a very oddly specific number. But there's actually a reason why Kahoot is doing this. Um, if you think back to times in your life where you've maybe gone to a carnival or a fair, uh, here in the US, um, we have a place called Chuck E. Cheese where you go and you play little games and the games spit out, spit out tickets. So you get lots and lots of tickets for playing a game. Now, when you get those tickets, the truth is that their value is pretty low. There, usually you gather all these tickets and then you go turn them in and you get some really kind of dinky toy, like a plastic ring, something very cheap um, in exchange for all of these tickets. But the joy is in the earning of all the tickets. You're not really thinking about the real world cash in the, that you're going to receive from all the tickets. You're just thinking about how much fun it is to collect all these tickets. And the more tickets, the better. And so that's why. Kahoot is using these really big random numbers, um, is it's to, to tap into that type of psychology of, I just earned 1,078 points. And so you get excited about the, the narrative of the game. You're not thinking about what those points are actually going to earn you or buy you. You're just excited um, just to, be, to be earning um, this large number. Um, and then lastly, this person, they're on the podium. And we're gonna see at the end that the first, second, and third place uh, winners of the Kahoot get a special reward, which is that they get to be on the podium. So uh, if the person is performing really well, then they'll see this message as well. If they're incorrect, um, then uh, they're, they're gonna obviously be given that information that their answer was incorrect, but there's an encouraging statement, don't worry, nobody's perfect. And then you're in fourth place um, that lets them know, kind of gives them a target so they know what they're aiming for on the next question. Uh, so we see these different aspects of gamification. And uh, this is why Kahoot is so popular from elementary schoolers all the way to adults is because they love this story. They love this idea of being able to level up, of competing against their classmates, of getting an answer streak, um, and, uh, or of maybe even being on the podium. And so I want to show you at the end, after a student has answered all of their questions and they've earned all of their point values, um, this is what it looks like when you finally see the podium at the end of a Kahoot. And so in our case, Awesome EL was our was the one that's on fire there. They had an answer streak of five. And then at the very end, it shows us a podium. So English Learner was our third place winner. Adult Learner was our second place winner. And Spotlight, Awesome EL, and Confetti was our first place winner. And so this is what students are going, this is what they're working for. This is what they're excited about, is they want to see their name on the podium at the end of the Kahoot. Uh, and this is what uh, how gamification um, ties into um, the Kahoot app, is that it's that students become engaged because they want to beat the game. Um, and so uh, anytime I've ever used Kahoot, students get very, um, very into the class because they're wanting to see if they can earn the most points, if they can get on the podium, if they can get an answer streak going. I actually did a cute Kahoot over the weekend with a bunch of adult learners and you could feel the vibe, you could feel 
the kind of environment change once we started playing the Kahoot because you could feel that engagement piece kick in. Uh, what's important to know though is that we want to use Kahoot for the engagement piece because it gets our learners excited about the content that we're teaching. But the really significant part of Kahoot is the formative assessment piece. And so uh, the formative assessment has two purposes. Um, one is that a formative assessment shows us how students are forming knowledge. And then two, it informs us as instructors as to what we need to adjust based on our students' progress. And so we see students forming knowledge and then informing our instruction based on what we've learned. A formative assessment, the opposite of formative is summative. So a summative assessment is something that you would do at the end of a unit, at the end of a, of a concept where you might give a, a test or a quiz. Um, that's summative assessment. That's kind of the end. You can't really, at that point, it's that you're just seeing what they know. Um, and there's not much that you can do at that point to change it. That's why, for example, if your students take a, an exit exam or something, at that point, they're just che you're checking to see what do they know? What have they learned? But all along the way, before they ever reach that summative assessment, we as instructors need to be uh, giving formative assessments. That is checking in and seeing, are they with me? Do they understand? Have they mastered this concept? Can I move on? Do I need to reteach something? And that's the data that Kahoot quizzes can provide to you as an instructor. So for example, if I were uh, an instructor of a course and I were giving a Kahoot and I see that this is, and again, I only have four students in my class. Let's say that you have a lot more, obviously, but I only have two of my students, so half my class, that got the correct answer on a particular question. Well, this is telling me something about how my students are forming their knowledge, and it's also giving me information about what I need to do to adjust my instruction um, next. So in this example, the question was identify the mistake, and the red and blue options, all of these are about the to be verb, um, but the red and blue options are an example of a be verb followed by a noun phrase. The yellow one is just missing a be verb altogether. And then the green one is a be verb followed by a predicate adjective. And so if I'm looking at this data, and my students have had so much fun playing this game and they're so excited, but I as the teacher, I'm going to look at this data through a completely different lens. And I'm going to say, I think my students understand, I think they've mastered the skill that's represented in the red and blue, but I need to go back and revisit the skill in the green one, where it's a beaver for the adjective, because half of the class isn't quite sure if that's the mistake or if the missing B verb is the mistake. And so this information informs my instruction. Kahoot is really good about giving you lots of data, lots of information uh, based on the, how your students perform in these Kahoot quizzes. And so as an example, uh, up until this point, everything you've seen is from the student view. But from the instructor view, when you log into your Kahoot um, account, after you've given a Kahoot to your students, you're going to see a report that shows each of your learners and how they did on the, um, on the assessment. Uh, it's gonna show the final score, again, because the points that are assigned are very random, um, this isn't going to be nearly as important as the percent of accuracy. And so if this were my class and I was saying, okay, I had two at 80% accuracy and two at 60% accuracy, I've got about 70% of the class that have mastered this concept, I'm going to be thinking about, I may need to go back and reteach or re-clarify a concept before I move on. The general rule of thumb is you're looking for 80% mastery um, uh, from the majority of the class. Um, so I'm close to that here, but I may want to go back and clarify a few things. Likewise, let's say I give a Kahoot 
as a, a pre-assessment. I want to know what students already know about a topic before I ever teach it. If I'm giving this Kahoot as a pre-assessment and I'm seeing this type of data, this tells me that my students are very close to mastery on a topic that I haven't even taught yet, so I don't need to spend that much time on that topic. And so the data is informing my instruction. Um, Kahoot um, gives uh, all sorts of different reports. There's reports online and then also downloadable reports. So I want to show you a quick video of what the online looks like. So this is as soon as the game's over, I can click view report. And when I click view report, I'm able to see all of the names of my students, the different uh, levels of accuracy. Um, I'm able to scroll down and see different questions. Now, there is an option up there that says difficult questions um, that will actually show you which ones were the hardest questions for your students to answer. But you'll notice a little crown next to it. That crown is for the paid version of this uh, app. And so, um, so this would not be accessible to you. But I have been using the free version for years and I've never needed the paid version. I've been able to get all the data that I need. Uh, continuing on with the video, looks like it restarted there, but we'll go forward a little bit. Uh, they're going to show you the correct and incorrect ratio, answer timing, and um, a few other details. And then there will be a link where you can download a spreadsheet. When you download the spreadsheet, it's going to look like this. And it's going to get break down all of the information, kind of an overview page, and then they'll show the final scores of each student, um, how many correct answers they got, how many incorrect answers they got. Um, they'll give a summary of all of the questions and it's color coded so you can see green and red who answered correctly and incorrectly. And then it also is going to break it down by individual question. So plenty of data here to drive your instruction. So the exciting thing about Kahoot is that um, you can make your own Kahoots if you want, but you can also use ready-made Kahoots. And so if you happen to be using any of the Cambridge University uh, Press curriculum, um, they have actually been working hard to create Kahoots that correspond to each of their products. And so currently there are Kahoots available for academic encounters, final draft, Making Connections, PRISM, the Ventures Curriculum, and Grammar and Beyond. And when you, so if you go to Kahoot and you just type in the search bar um, any of these titles, you're able to come up with um, the different Kahoots that are available. And when I say that Kahoots are available, I mean a lot of ready-made, ready-to-go Kahoots. You don't have to enter in the questions. You don't have to enter in the answers. They are ready to go. So I just want to show you um, when I log into Kahoot and I look at the Grammar and Beyond um, curriculum, these are the Kahoots that are already available to you as an instructor today. And you'll see I can just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. There's one for every level, every unit. And then we're going to click on one specific one here. And so you can see that the, everything's already built out and all you have to do is click play and then you can go ahead and play and it starts the Kahoot. It gives you a pin um, so that you can go ahead and start playing the Kahoot. It's, it's just that easy. Uh, lastly, I want to see if we can play a Kahoot together because I think, you know, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to experience it. And so I'd like to invite you to, um, to pull out your phone or to open up another browser in your, um, in your, on your computer and to go to kahoot.it. And then I'm going to start a game pen and we're actually going to play a Kahoot together. So if you want to be on the podium, this is your chance. Uh, Kahoot rewards accuracy and speed. So that's what you're aiming for. So I'm going to end my show. I'm going to pull up the Kahoot that we're going to play. I'm going to click play. And then you'll see that I have the option of I could make it a, uh, a team Kahoot or I can make it individual. 
So if you happen to be in a class where not everyone has a device, so not everyone has a phone they could play on, you could select team versus team. I'm gonna go ahead and click classic since we're obviously spread out all over the place. So when I click on this, it's going to populate our um, game pen and you can hear this kind of funny music. This is the Kahoot music. Um, and so if you will go to kahoot.it and click the uh, game pen. Way to go, man, we're already at 45, already at 55. And so you have the option of, of uh, typing in, you know, a nickname, uh, a, a, your actual name, a number. In classes where I'm going to use the data, um, and especially if I'm going to try to capture the data for a grade or for participation grade, I generally ask my students to use their last name because that's how my grade book is sorted. Um, but you know, you can do whatever is works well for you. Um, it's just harder if a student's using a nickname for you to be able to use the data to figure out who how who is performing at what level uh, because you're trying to figure out well who is this person with this emojis or like we've got JPL 2020 if that was my student it would be hard to figure that out okay it looks like we're about leveling off if anyone else wants to join us you're welcome to the game pin is 656-420 Give it just a couple more seconds. And so remember that the Kahoot is going to, you wanna get the correct answer and you also want to get the correct answer as quickly as possible. If you want more of those random points, that's, you want it to be quick. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. It looks like we're just about there. You can continue to join even after we've started if you wanna get the experience of playing. All right, here we go, good luck. All right, there's five questions. First question, which publishing company is hosting today's webinar? Is it Cambridge University Press, Oxford University Press, Heinemann Press, or Saddleback Education? Looks like you guys are getting the hang of it. All right, so today's webinar is being hosted by Cambridge University Press, so 190 got that correct, so it looks like we all remembered. And thank you to Cambridge for hosting. Let's go on to the next question. But first, let's find out Olivia, way to go, was our top point earner. Aaron, yay, love the enthusiasm. Amanda and Rihanna, way to go. Next one, true or false? Gamification is the use of game design elements in game contents. Is that a true or a false statement? And as you can see, this one only has two options. So you don't always have to use all four options when you're making your Kahoot. You can just have a two or three option question. There we go. It's true. Gamification is the use of game design elements in non-game context. So we, we looked at an educational context today. Let's see how we're doing. Jackie P, way to go. Um, so hopefully some of you are receiving that you are either on the podium, that you have an answer streak. Hopefully you've got a lot of points so you can see those gamification elements. Here's our next question. Kahoot is a or an app Bank app available to educators. Is it expensive, exclusive, free, or mediocre? No, it looks like we're almost there. Who's it going to be? All right, it's free. It's a free app. So that's, we love free. Teachers love free. So you can, even though they have a paid version of it, you don't need that paid version. You should be able to do everything you need to do with the free uh, free part. Okay, wait, oh, Jackie P is still on top. Way to go. And you see right in here, uh, BY is the highest climber, up 46 places from last time. So that's exciting, good for you. Here's the next one. True or false, 
You do not have to download an app to play a Kahoot. Is that true or false? You do not have to download an app to play a Kahoot. What do you think? All right, 197 said that was true and that is correct. It's You don't have to download an app, you can. There is an app that you can download, but you can play just direct from their website, kahoot.it. All right, Ooh. still see some of those same names. 12 players just hit answer streak three, so way to go if you're one of those 12 players. And I think this is our final question. Kahoot ensures high quality instruction through storification, formative assessment, or high stakes testing. And so this is an example of a three option. So instead of having four answers, we just have three. Yeah, formative assessment. This it's students enjoy Kahoot, and that's a and getting the engagement piece is important, but you've only got half the story if you just use it for engagement. Uh, we as instructors, we have an obligation to use it, to look at the data and to use that data to inform our own instruction and use it as a formative assessment. All right, here's our podium. Let's see what we got. Olivia is in third, way to go. Jill H was in second and our number one was Zinto. Congratulations, uh, runners up, winner and Abby. So way to go. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what uh, Kahoot feels like, what it looks like. Um, you can experience it. Um, hopefully the, uh, this has helped you to, to get a little bit more information about not only what Kahoot is, but how it can help you to both achieve engagement and academic rigor. And I will now open it up to any questions that we might have. All right, thank you so much, Katie. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder really quick before the questions. Um, this was being, this webinar was recorded and we're gonna uh, <clears throat> send you an email with a link to the recording in one to two weeks, along with your certificate of participation. Now I'm gonna turn it up uh, over to Kyoko. She's been collecting some of your questions and she's going to ask the questions and then Katie will answer. Hi, thank you Katie for that very insightful and fun session. I think we had a lot of people playing Kahoot along with us. Um, so the first question I have is what types of type or types of questions are most suitable for Kahoot? Yeah, typically um, in the free version, it's gonna be a uh, multiple choice or true false are going to be the types of options that you can do. And as we saw with the multiple choice, that could be a, um, uh, it could have two options, three options or four options, four is the max. All right, and in addition, we have the cahoots that the Cambridge University Press made for some of our titles that Katie mentioned. We have different types of questions such as listening, where we listen to an audio and you have to answer the question. So there's different types aside um, that you can go in and play with as well. Um, next question, what would you do about students who may be embarrassed or discouraged when they get the wrong answer or didn't do well in the rankings? Yeah, that's a good question. It can be discouraging. I think one of the things that Kahoot does well is even if you're not on the podium, um, they are, you're still going to, for example, they're going to reward any positive trend. So if you, if you got none right and all of a sudden you got one right, then they're going to reward that by saying that you now have an answer streak going. Um, and so, uh, and they are, because the point values are so high, um, even if someone is not being super successful with the Kahoot, they are still achieving some points. And so I haven't, in my experience, I haven't had a lot of students 
be they're frustrated with themselves because they wanted to get the right answer but they understand this is a low stakes thing um, and that's the whole idea of a formative assessment is it's low stakes it's their opportunity to make mistakes and yeah maybe they don't make the podium this time but they had the opportunity to practice their skills and and they know that the next time they play maybe they'll do better thank you um next question uh we have how would you apply Kahoot in a mixed level classroom? Yeah, it's a good question. I think in a mixed level classroom, one option that you have is to do the teams. Um, so instead of playing uh, individually, you can you can do the team option. Um, and uh, there's pros and cons to that, but the pro is that you the team has to talk through the answer together before they submit um, whatever their selection is. And so that gives your mixed ability learners a chance to learn from each other, a chance to share their own knowledge. Um, I've also seen when you use teams with mixed ability learners that those who have already mastered the concept get very frustrated because the because Kahoot rewards, um, speed. Uh, if they know the answer, but they're trying to convince their classmates that that's the right answer, then it can that can be a frustrating situation. So I think it, there's pros and cons to it. But one one thing that you want to try out is the team option. Great. Right. Speaking of the teams option, how could you would you be able to assess uh, each individual students in a team, or do you only get results by the yeah? Group? Only for the group, yeah, only for the group. So if you're needing individual data, then uh, you need to do the one-on-one. -on -one. I, I would say in my experience, I occasionally use Teams, but I most often use the, the individual answers because it gives me better data on how my students are performing. We have another question. Um, do players have to play simultaneously or can a game run over a couple of days and the statistics are retained and compared at the end? I didn't quite catch that question. Can you say it one more time? Oh, sorry. Uh, do the players all have to play simultaneously? Is there a feature where a game can run over a couple of days and the statistics are retained and compared to provide results at the end of that period? Um, if that functionality is available, I'm not aware of it. I believe that it has to be played live. I think um, maybe the challenge function that um, Kahoot has. So I know what Katie just demonstrated is what's called the live Kahoot. And we there's also an option to do a challenge where you can as assign a pin and the students can play on their app or on their computer, and it's kind of a self-contained quiz instead of having um, the questions displayed at the front of the class or on your screen and then the students answer. So it'll be, you can be assigned it for homework and you can set a time period and I think that one retains the information and you have the rankings at the end when the game is, the, the period is ending, if that makes sense. Great, well, yeah, so they do have that functionality. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, let's see, I'm looking for more questions. Can we apply Kahoot in a single person private lesson? Uh, I definitely think you could. Um, you know, I, the challenge there is that there's not a competition against another person. And so some of the gamification aspects that come from competing against a group of people would be diminished, but I, I think you could still do it. I think we're just about finished. Uh, we've answered most of the questions. The other questions that are coming in are about Kahoot, features in Kahoot and what you can do with it. So I'll try to answer those in the questions box individually. But yeah. I think generally, um, I think we're pretty set. Do you have anything you want to elaborate on or make a final point about the session? No, I just appreciate everyone being here. I hope that you'll use this tool. And again, you know, it's in my experience, I, it was always super fun to play Cahoots as it was fun to play with you guys today. 
but the real benefit is after it's over, going and downloading that report and taking a minute to look at the data and then deciding what do I need to do next? Is my class with me? Have they mastered the concept? Can I move on? Do I need to go back and reteach something? Who's still struggling? Because that information is what's going to drive really high quality instruction in your classroom. All right, thank you very much, Katie, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. I know there are people from all around the world. Some, For some of you, it's very late, so thank you again for joining us and listening in. And so hope everyone has a very good day and good evening, depending 